Finance from ABSA. Today, tomorrow, together. Botswana is known as one of the most peaceful nations on the African continent, but for three days in June, this very quiet and peace was shattered by more than 80 cars, which pierced the air with loud noise and sped along desert paths at breakneck pace. It was the Toyota Kalahari Botswana Desert 1,000-kilometer race, leg four of the 2007 ABSA Off-Road Championship Series, marking the halfway point of the nationals, all of the categories which were all balanced on a knife edge. The route was divided up into a prologue on day one over 50 kilometers to determine and starting positions for the racing proper on day two and three when the 75 teams of production and special vehicles hit the circular route that was designed with the Botswana Tourism Board and the local ecology in mind. Hosts Toyota were desperate to end an eight-year winning drought in their own flagship event after Mitsubishi, Ford and Nissan had tasted victory here, the last mention being the champions for the past half a dozen years. Well, coming to a Toyota event, it's always nice to pull a full win. Um, I think we've got the a good base to work from. I think we've got a good shot at it. So we'll, we'll see closer to the time once you've done the prologue and we've got a good idea of, of, of our pace. But I'm looking forward to the event. I think it's going to be a good event for us. Kronje made his mark in rallying, but how does off-road compare to that? Well, it's very difficult. Uh, they're both totally different uh, disciplines and um, I'm enjoying rally tremendously, but it is always enjoyable to win. So we'll see with time how it goes on. I, I, I like the speed and the technicality of the rallying, but the durability and the, the ruggedness of the off-road also has its merits. Grandier's Toyota stablemate Bevan Berthold says winning is great, but the fun element is also important. You know, it's nice to be here and we, we're going to have a lot of fun, you know. It's what people must remember that we're in a sport and uh, you've got to enjoy it along the road as well. You can't just have pressure, pressure, have to win. No, we all want to win, but the thing finishes, will be very happy. Three-time champion Ford's Neil Woolridge says with a little more luck, the championship challenge would have looked completely different. Well, I think we must be in with a good shot. The car's good. Uh, we had a good run at Sun City after two dismal races early on in the year, so the car's going well. Uh, I think if it hadn't been for a, a mishap in the time trial at Sun City, we could have been challenging for the win. And uh, it's one of my favourite races, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a nice, it's long thousand kilometres of grueling, more the endurance side rather than the sprint side, which suits me and I think suits the car as well. But uh, in saying that, I think it's going to be a really tough route from what I can gather. They've had quite a bit of rain over the past. The bush is thick and there's a completely new route, so it's a challenge for everybody. But uh, I'd, I'd like to think we're in with a shot. We're certainly going to be going for it. There's no doubt about that. And then there's the quite confident one in the Ford camp, Manfred Schroeder, who says all the on-the-job training has certainly helped. We've done, what, three races now. Um, I think that's about enough time you know, to do, really learn what the car can do and what it can't do. Yeah, but this is a different race again, um, and it's a thousand kilometers. Today and tomorrow you have to get a good, um, you know, good pace to get a good starting position because there is going to be lots of dust, but you also have to conserve the car a bit for Sunday. Another three-time winner and the defending champion Hannes Krobler loves this event, and the Nissans also adores this one. Definitely, um, this is always a very good event here. Um, you know, the, the, I like the route. Uh, it's a long distance uh, route, you know, it's over two days and uh, yeah, it takes something different from you when you're doing this event, you know, and, uh, but the competition is going to be stiff. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, all over, all the manufacturers, cars are very good at the moment and uh, yeah, you don't know if you're going to win, but we're definitely going to try. For Ivar Tollefsen, Nissan's Norwegian import, there was some overtraining, but the round 1000 Ks did not hold any fears for him. The distance shouldn't be a problem. Uh, my arm hurts a lot from training at home, so uh, I hope the distance is okay. But normally, the longer it is, the better it will be for us. Do you enjoy racing in, in, in South Africa? A lot. It's beautiful. It's uh, sunshine and it's uh, very nice people and team. Everything's fantastic. The experienced father and son combination of Hiku and Jaap de Brain and the McLaren XL dealer team Toyota Hilux have good memories from 2006. Last year was a good event for us. Uh, I mean, we're running with a Class D bike and we came third overall. And hopefully we can achieve that same result this year. Um, the desert race is one of my favorite races and uh, I'm looking very forward to it. Uh, the bucky is uh, in immac immaculate condition, uh, it's well prepared. Toyota helps us a lot with the preparation of the vehicle. And yeah, we hopefully we can do the same for them. It's their home event and uh, the main the main sponsor. So we'll try to make it a one, two, and three, and four for Toyota. Hopefully. Meanwhile.
our one or two old timers were also back in the fray as well. Richard Leake had lots of experience and seven desert race victories on his CV. I decided that uh, the other guys were catching up and I better just get another win quickly so I move away from them. So uh, it's certainly nice to be back. Um, Nissan was short of a co-driver for this event uh, through one of their guys testing overseas and asked me if I'd sit in the hot seat. Um, I haven't sat with Duncan before, so it's going to be quite exciting sitting with somebody different. But uh, in testing, we seem to get on quite well together in the car. So uh, really looking forward to it. In Class E, the gloves were all but off, and just five points covered the top four teams after three races. The first four guys in the class, we, I think we, we split with about three or four points. So finish today, well, on Sunday, is, is going to be very important. And we're feeling confident. I think we're going to have a nice race and uh, it's going to be tough in any case here. Yeah. Tough and exacting, but that's the desert for you. In the production car class, Krobler and Jordan were leading by 13 points from Foss and Pitchford, who had won at Sun City in the previous round, while Cronier and Birkin were desperate for a win in third place. In the special vehicle class, there was even less to choose between the top runners, but they were all gunning to push reigning national champ Alfie Cox off his pedestal. The desert race, I believe, Sunday is the main race. I mean, it's a thousand kilometers. That's the same as us racing two of our normal nationals. And uh, yeah, last year we came second. I mean, we, uh, Harper beat us last year. And uh, But now in the new car, and hopefully all the teething problems are fixed. But uh, it's the desert race. Eh? This place can bring you tears, it can bring you joy. So, But yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm giving him a full shot. I mean, if I can win the championship on all three that I've done already, and now to take this desert race, which is, yes, it's a very pre prestigious race. And the motorite crew were certainly ready to race. But for the Atlas Copco outfit, the Harpers, father Nick and son Ryan, it was all about finishing. Look, we've got a, a good car, we fit, and you know, we didn't finish the last race, we have to try and finish this one. Ron, you know, a win is fantastic, but I don't think anybody's won the Toyota Desert Race twice in a row. Very, very difficult to win here. But that's what I'm hoping for, and I'm going to try for it, definitely. Huh? For the Total Motorsport Camp, there was only one place to go, the winner's circle, Shamir Wariyawa. This is my favorite race, first of all. Uh, the Dennis race is um, the one to win. And uh, we've been, un we, I mean, we finished second, third, fourth, but we've never won it. And we're going to try for a win this time. Um, the last race we had a bit of a problem. Uh, gearbox let up on us, and uh, so we've put a new gearbox in, tested, so we, we're ready for, for action. There are only 17 points covering the top six, and many a weary eye was watching the cries. Jan and Henrik in Class B had won every event so far in 07 and had compiled a tidy amount of points, but Motrite was sitting pretty with first and third nicely covered. But eventually it was time for the talking to stop and the racing to start. And first off on the 50k prologue, it was Deotas de Brain who sprinted away from the line at Race HQ at Game City outside Gaborone. <laughs> Yawa and his co-pilot Siegfried Rousseau were also impressive early on and were setting up the fastest intermediate times for the specials in their total porter. But even early on, it was clear that dust would be a severe problem for the teams. Nissan Navarra driver Krobler and his trusty co-driver Francois Jordan were also out of the blocks quickly and were in a hurry to place as high up as possible and avoid all the dirt. They made their point, while the other Atlas Copco team, Gary Bertolt and Henry Castain, made theirs. They were very impressive after a quiet start to the season. Colin Matthews and Alan Smith and their Century Properties developments backed with its Audi engine that surprised by going third fastest early on. While the Harpers in second in the championship, just four points behind, had to find the balance between conservation and speed early on. They've had a very consistent season and the move to the Atlas Copco team has shown that they certainly have the talent to become national champions. The reigning Class D champion Manfred Schroeder and his partner Ward Huxtable and their Barlow World Absolute Ford love the longer distances and certainly know how to nurse a car along. Reigning space frame champion Alfie Cox has won the desert race in a production car and on two wheels but never in a special. Thus he was looking for a trifecta in 2007. Meanwhile, Cronier and Birkin were driving themselves into fourth fastest in the production prologue lineup, which meant a heck of a lot less dust than further back. 
Christopher Senyapi Bardnost were just a further 40 seconds behind them in another Castel Tiata Hilux. Seventh overall and sixth in class, it was Nandis Alberts and Colin Hunter in their fire engine red wraps up back who clocked exactly 40 minutes and 40 seconds for the 50 kilometers. For Naim Mosaji and Rayan Bodjana in the second total motorsport Jimco, there was, shall we say, a thorny issue or two to sort out. Okay, you drove into them, you take them out. No, you pointed this way. Uh, okay, ask the marshal. Thanks, pal. Herman Silwald and Paul Helberg went at it hammer and tongs and took eighth in class with a quick prologue drive. In 14th place overall, but just 96 seconds off the pace, Bevan Bertolt and his nav Robin Houghton took the Toyota Hilux through its paces. They needed a good finish. Let's now drop in on former national champs Duncan Foss and his new co-driver Richard Leake and their proudly South African Nissan Navara. Right, next to Finn, but not extreme right. So slight right. That one. 300 cows. Okay, 200. Turn 90 left for four fence. 90 left for four fence. Can't be done. Look for it. 100. 90 left for four fins. Yeah, got it. There we are. Close call. For Ford Ranger driver Brandon Harkis and John Moore, there was a solid, if unspectacular, start in eighth place in the SP class. While their teammates Warridge and Kenny Schulthammer and the other Ford Ranger were a further eight seconds back, plagued by starter motor and alternator problems. Norwegian Tollefsen, who is a mountaineer in his spare time, piloted his Nissan Navara and his Nav Quinn Evanston 19th overall, but was clearly taking it relatively easy. The fourth Ford Ranger with Kubis van Tonda and Rian Grappa aboard also caught the eye with their first full drive out, and they took 11th in the SP class in 42 minutes and 4 seconds. S, there's been a season-long battle, and one of the protagonists, another former desert winner Richard Schilling and his stand-in nav Mick Westhazen, nailed their colours to the mast, leading the prologue by three minutes. Three wins out of three gave the newcomers of the year 2006 the cries a clear leading Class B, and the Regent Racing pair had a healthy 20-point lead over their nearest championship rivals, the Beside Notes, Johan and Etienne and their Denko Bat. They were just 31 seconds behind the cries and chasing hard. With Walter Duplessini, Sandmaster Maxi Mag in third place in turn, just 19 seconds behind the Beside Notes. For former SA champion Evan Hutchison and Akim Bergman, a troublesome fan belt and a fuel starvation problem cost them five minutes and left them eating dust the rest of the way. In Class E, Young Fisser and Jox Leroux and their Barbus Van Toyota Hilux were trying to maintain a 30-second advantage over the Barkhuizens. While the Weichelts, Cliff and Louis were sandwiched in the middle in Class E. And they were being chased by Malcolm Cock and Wayne Brink in their Castrol Toyota, just three seconds behind in Class. the Barkhuizens chasing for all they were worth in the Rokon Toyota Hilux in Class E. With 
950 k still to go, the back lines had been drawn in the sand and the De Bruyne's were standing at the top end of it. However, only 63 seconds covered the top 10, indicating that the competitiveness was not at all lacking. And in the specials, it was ditto, with Matthews and Smith surprising all in sundry and delighting their sponsors with a fine third place, just eight ticks off the pace. The Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race continues. Vehicle.